Today on the show, we kill a neurosurgeon and then make a decision that alters humanity's path forever. And we stop to ask ourselves, what did we just do? Welcome to Lore Party, the podcast that explores the stories, characters, and universes of our favorite video games. My name is Leo. And I'm Lawrence. And today we are tackling the first part of a two-part thing, uh, potentially. We'll see. We'll find out. Um, but we are <laughs> tackling the first part of a big conversation, a big decision. Um, now, if you haven't yet listened to the previous episodes of uh, Lawrence and I talking about Last of Us uh, in Lore Party, I encourage you to do so. They were some of the most fun episodes to record. People seem to like them. Check them out. They're a lot of fun. Exactly. Why are you starting at the last episode? What's wrong with you? <laughs> who Who are you? So <laughs> The Last of Us is, is we've ranted and raved about how much we love this game for the last almost couple of months now, it feels like. Um, and we haven't yet really talked about the final decision. And this is a huge part of the game. This is a huge part of the experience. So what we're going to start off with is a conversation about like what the decision means. What weight does the decision actually have? Because at times you can feel a little bit like a passive passenger on narrative-based video games like this that take you from point A to point B to point C. You don't always make decisions about what you say to characters. So we want to talk about exactly what this decision, kind of its weight, right? Definitely. And I mean, in terms of decisions and any like narrative driven decision based video game, I think that like this, this final moment in this game is honestly what makes The Last of Us one of, uh, one of the most like iconic video games of our day. I think like it just wraps up so nicely. And it's a bold choice because sometimes the temptation is, do you want to do something that pleases everybody? Do you want to give everybody the choice? Or do you want to just make a decision and let people deal with that? And I think it's a, it's a strong choice and it's one that I, that I definitely uh, back up and, and respect. So Joel and Ellie are saved, captured by fireflies and Joel wakes up in the firefly base. And and just to, to give some context to that for all of you people who decided to to jump ahead to this episode because you hate yourselves. Um, like Joel's whole, um, the whole point of this game was, was basically like, it's like the transporter. Joel <laughs> was supposed to, t- <laughs> God damn it. Joel was supposed to take Ellie to the fireflies because of her immunity to the CBI infection. Um, in exchange for some guns. So, you know, they have their entire adventure. They go from, you know, basically despising one another to kind of like a daughter, uh, father type, uh, relationship. They go through this, this tunnel, this like really flimsy ass bridge that they're standing on collapses, which causes, um, Joel and Ellie to go underwater. Joel saves Ellie because she can't swim. And then he pulls her out of the water and is basically trying to resuscitate her. They run into a Firefly soldier, and that Firefly soldier knocks Joel unconscious. And then we wake up what into what turns out to be the final part of the game. Now, it's funny because you mentioned it, you mentioned it kind of briefly, but it's so worth mentioning that the entire game is Joel taking Ellie to the Fireflies, right? Like, this is the ring being taken to Mount Doom. Like, it's there, right? Joel wakes up, uh, having been knocked out by a Firefly soldier, but he wakes up uh, to, to see Marlene, of all people, and he, in a lot of ways, like, he succeeded. <laughs> like, that's, th- you did it, Frodo. Yeah. You got the ring to the mountain. You're done. Um, and he did it for the most American reason ever. He did it for guns. He did it for guns. Oh my god. All this was for some fucking guns. Just remember that, everybody. It's not fucking important, but it's hilarious. If we were the type of podcast to have a soundboard, I would be doing like eagle screeches 
uh, shotgunning beers, that sort of thing, you know? Oh, and then the one, the whistle, where it's like, woo! <laughs> <laughs> That's like as he pulls the trigger and kills Marlene. Just, woo! <laughs> that was a dick move, Joel. Woo! Um, oh, oh, my God. God. Anyway, we're getting ahead of ourselves. So, <laughs> um, basically, Joel's like, cool, we're here, that's good. Right. That's good. That's what I've been trying to get. Uh, this is what I've been trying to achieve for so long, <laughs> for a long time. And uh, he's like, hey, can I can I see Ellie? Hey, Marlene, can I see Ellie? Because at this point, Ellie is in so many ways uh, someone that Joel has accepted and is has opened up to in a lot of ways that he hasn't really ever since the death of his daughter. And so this is a, this is a big deal. And he, and he says, I, I'd like to. Uh, uh, where's where's Ellie? I'd like to talk to her. And I, I'm sorry, I, I this part is like super exciting. But there's a there's an interesting part in here too. Marlene tries to kind of talk around Joel as he's showing his concern, right? Um, and then Joel does something that like he never does through the throughout the entire game. He's like, hey, you know, you don't have to worry about her. We'll take care of her. And then he just is like, please, I worry. Which is a lot. I mean, you got to check out our last episode where we talk about Joel and basically how he's just a grumpy, miserly old, like, just kind of walls up old man. Right. And he's like just admittingly admitted openly like, yeah, you know, I, 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 I worry about this child. So please let me see them. Like he's almost like just like. Not necessarily begging, but as close to begging as Joel Miller can get. Right. His, his canonical last name from the Japanese <laughs> book. So, um, yeah. So, so Joel begs, uh, basically. And I, I, I feel comfortable saying that because when, when he's in this quarantine zone and he's smuggling, like, Marlene is someone that he would keep at arm's distance. Very much so. So, the, again, this idea of him being like, please. Like, let me see Ellie is such a big moment. It's really important to, to kind of highlight that. Um, now, she mentions that Ellie is being prepped for surgery, and it kind of slowly comes to light that this is not going to end with Ellie alive, right? This is yeah. going to end with um, the CBI infection that is in Ellie's brain is dormant or it's not, it's, it's, it's inactive, and they're going to remove her brain in order to uh, try to reverse engineer a vaccine. But we're also not just making that up, right? Like that's in, um, it's in an audio recording, right? Well, it's actually like, they, they talk about it in the conversation that they have. And like, that's how Joel kind of comes to the conclusion. And it's funny because this whole conversation is like Marlene trying to sidestep Joel. The conversation that they have is like, you know, they, 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 they do the PR spin. So it's like, Hey, um, you know, the doctor believes that like we can reverse engineer a cute, like a, a vaccine, like a vaccine, Joel, uh, all we need to do. We've, we've determined that like the, uh, CBI infection inside of Ellie mutated. Um, if we can isolate it, then, uh, like we can, we can actually do this. So we need to remove like the infection. And then Joel's like, but it spreads all over the brain. And then Marlene's like response is just like that it does. Yeah. Brutal. And then Joel kind of like puts two and two together. Like you're going to take out this kid's brain. I think this is significant for so many reasons, right? Like Marlene slowly, as you said, politically carefully reveals this truth that she's also grappling with. Like, this is not something that's easy for her to admit, and this is not the way that she wants it to go either. Because right. one of the things that we've learned, either through replaying the game or exploring some of the lore that's built into this world, is that Ellie's mother, Anna, actually knew Marlene. They were close. Uh, they knew each other, and Anna asked Marlene, like, hey, if anything happens to me, you know, God forbid, if anything happens to me, please take care of my daughter. Yeah, that's it's super interesting. Um, just because it, it like the the you have to 
The Last of Us, like we've talked about in previous episodes, it does a really good job of like, it doesn't state everything. It doesn't put everything right in front of your face. Like if you're interested in this game, you have to dig for the additional information, whether it is this graphic novel or like little little clues that they throw in in the game. But knowing this changes like how you can possibly perceive Marlene in this game. Um, because knowing the fact that um, Ellie's mother, Anna, entrusted Ellie to Marlene, and Marlene is pretty much acting as like that de facto like surrogate parent, pretty much puts her in the same light as Joel. Well, and she also, like, we, when we are handed Ellie from Marlene in game, if you only played the game and didn't really like dig, you can tell that there's some rapport there, and Ellie's like, don't. You know, there, there there is obviously some closeness there, right. but it, you have no idea how much there's. It, it's not they don't really dwell on it, right? To your point, they don't just say, "Hi, I'm Marlene. This is my character. Uh, this is Ellie. This is our relationship." You kind of have to figure it out. So, right. um, Marlene actually meets Ellie like weeks before Joel enters the picture, and ultimately Ellie ends up after Riley passes, and we talked a lot about that in the second uh, Last of Us episode, but after Riley passes, Ellie and Marlene, like, spend a lot of time together. And although we don't see that time, really, it's pretty clear that Marlene, as the designated, like, godmother of Ellie, clearly values her. Now, she she might not have the same, like, twisted, broken parts of her that Joel has from losing his literal daughter, Sarah. But it's it's important to her that Ellie is 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 a living person and she cares about her and she loves her. And I I you know, you reminded me before, the soldiers, the Firefly soldiers wanted to kill Joel. Yeah, we, we do find a recording of of Marlene. And uh, you know, we'll we'll play the audio a little bit because it's it's actually super uh, it's super interesting, and personally, I missed this the first playthrough, and I found it on my second playthrough, and was like, "Whoa, shit! This actually fundamentally changes my uh, like view of the ending of this game." It's five thirty p.m. on April twenty eighth. I just finished speaking with <laughs> more like yelling at our head surgeon. Apparently, there's no way to extricate the parasite without eliminating the host. <laughs> Fancy way of saying we gotta kill the fucking kid. And now they're asking for my go-ahead. The tests just keep getting harder and harder, don't they? <sighs> I'm so tired. I'm exhausted, and I just want this to end. So be it. Hey, Anna. It's been a while since we spoke. I, um... I just gave the okay to proceed with the surgery. I really doubt I had much of a choice. Asking me was more of a formality. I need you to know that I've kept my promise all these years. Despite everything that I was in charge of, I looked after her. I would have done anything for her, and at times I... Here's a chance to save us. All of us. This is what we were after, what you were after. They asked me to kill the smuggler. I'm not about to kill the one man in this facility that might understand the weight of this choice. Maybe he can forgive me. Oh, I miss you, Hannah. Your daughter will be with you soon. So from the recording that we just listened to, 
Um, you can see that Marlene actually expresses like her remorse, like her deep, deep, deep remorse for having to make this decision. Here's everything that Marlene has ever wanted. Here's everything that Marlene has ever fought for. The end of the CBI infection, uh, which could possibly lead to the uh, restoration of government um, and allow humanity to have a fighting chance. But it also involves killing her surrogate daughter, which creates an interesting dynamic between her and Joel. Like that, This is like where the, the ending of this game really kind of shows you how similar Marlene and Joel are. It, it, the interesting thing, I, I wonder if it would have gone differently if she had been processing it along with Joel, right? Like if the neurosurgeon told both Joel and Marlene together, because the the other thing that's that that's worth keeping in mind, we see all of this from Joel's perspective. We don't see her screaming at the surgeon. We don't see her grief and coming to terms with this really difficult decision. And Joel doesn't see that. So for Joel, who just spent a year, year and a half, two years with this girl and this woman who's just been doing whatever, uh, right. is, is saying, oh, no, it's sim- Joel, we're just going to take her brain out. Like, it's fine. Like, how batshit crazy that must sound to him. Um, right. And, he, and, and I wonder if he had a visceral understanding of her suffering that came through this decision or like her thought process, if it would have gone different. Okay, we're going to take a quick break here, but stick around. We'll be right back. Hey, it's Abu. I'm a producer and host here at Lore Party. This is the time I'd normally take to talk about sponsors, so maybe I'd tell you about that particular mattress company, or I'd let you know about this delivery service that brings easy-to-cook meals right to your doorstep, But since we don't have any sponsors, I figured I would just take this time to tell you about the series that I produce here on the show. My co-host Brett and I produce episodes about The Witcher. We deep dive into the lore and the stories and the characters of both the games and the books. So if that sounds like your cup of tea, be sure to check out the Lore Party feed and look for The Witcher episodes. Okay, enough of me interrupting this episode, back to what you were actually here to listen to. So Joel, Joel somehow, how does he do it? Overpowers uh, soldier number one and uh, like shocker uh, and then fights his way to Ellie. He gets to the uh, surgery room right as they're about to get going. Ellie is unconscious and he kills the neurosurgeon. And this is like, I, I, I think I saw both. Like, I think I saw both ways that you can kill this first neurosurgeon. But you just saw the second one recently, right? Yeah. I would always, uh, in, in both playthroughs, I just used the El Diablo and just kind of like blasted him. So he did the backflip. And in my mind, I was like, yo, I just blasted this guy away. That sucks for the world. <laughs> you know, that's yeah. pretty shitty. Last but like, neurosurgeon on the planet. Cool. The melee option is much more savage. It's 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 much more savage, and it just kind of shows Joel's aggression because this guy is like a wimpy ass nerd. He's just like, hey, I need to save humanity, and like in this Boom, desperation, I have a doctorate, Boom. right? Oh, please, no! You're like, this is a breakthrough in science. Don't do anything, man. <laughs> and like, he picks up a scalpel. Like, come on, Joel could have disarmed this man, but he picks up a scalpel and it's like, oh god, like trembling. Like, I can't. I can't allow you to do this. Like, you know, he's trying to, he's, he's literally just trying to reason with Joel. It's just, he's like freaked out. And then Joel just takes his arm, drives his scalpel into his neck and slits his throat in the most savage way possible. Right. Like this is neurosurgeon one. Like this is an unnamed dude who's just like, I'm here for my job. (laughs) It's like (laughs) throat slit done. So he totally unnecessarily kills at least one neurosurgeon and then potentially two others and then, or or like assistants. And then he picks up unconscious Ellie, barely, barely like evades hundreds of gunshots. 
uh, makes his way to the uh, the parking lot to escape the compound, and that's where he has a final meeting with Marlene, who it must be at this point just like fuck. I had I very much underestimated this person's attachment to this child. You'd think that Marlene would know better, but she attempts to appeal to Joel's humanity. I, she does a she does a half decent job. I mean, like her her lines there, like she's gonna end up dead if she's not raped and murdered first. Like yeah, oh. or eaten by clickers, and it it resonates so hard because the whole David thing, the the David thing, it was like, well, this guy's keeping this kid in a pet and in, in a cage, and his own men are referring to her as like his new pet, and it's weird, like what's going on, and like. How many times have, uh, like the 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 Sam and Henry thing where you have the sniper rifle, all of those infected, burst out of the um out of the fence and are chasing them. So it's not like it's either of those options are very unlikely, right? So he kills the hell out of Marlene, which we learn a little bit later. Um, in the epilogue, he's driving with Ellie, and uh, basically lies to her just straight up. He's like. Yeah, turns out there were other immune people, and uh, yeah, didn't didn't need you. But like he killed the way he kills Marlene is is terrible. Like I mean, because like we said, she has her hands up and she's just like you know, hey, let me like we can fix this. This can all be fixed. Right. And then he kind of he shoots her in the abdomen. Um, and and like then she like collapses. But you know, before we even even get into that, just like what Marlene has gone through to get to this point to have it snatched away is fucking terrible. Right. Cause like, even as you're, as you're exploring, um, the, you know, the, the, the hospital, you come across Marlene's journal and in her journal, she details like her journey across the country and all the men that she's lost and all the sacrifices that she made and how she can't even face her own men because, like, you know, when she makes it to the hospital because, like, they've sacrificed so much and they don't even have the one thing that they were trying to achieve. Like, she feels like like a failure as a leader. And then all of a sudden, they find Joel and they find Ellie and it's like, holy crap, we can actually do this we can you know we can save everyone and then you get even better news that like in this girl has this infection that's mutated and we can can possibly reverse engineer it into like a workable vaccine and we can finally achieve these goals and we can finally like set humanity on the right path and like you can call it a sign of weakness or just compassion or empathy like she doesn't want to harm Joel for caring about Ellie. Matter of fact, she wants to share in those feelings because like those feelings are her own too. Like she's Ellie's surrogate mother in the same way that Joel is Ellie's surrogate father. And those feelings are get her shot in the fucking head. Yeah. And like Joel, like after you know, after after Joel, you know, shoots her in the abdomen, he puts Ellie in the car and then comes back to finish the job. And Marlene begs for her life. Wait. Let me go. You just come after her. So as you can, as you could hear from that audio clip, it was pretty brutal. Like Marlene's begging for her life. And Joel's response is, nah, you'll just come looking for Ellie. And then just shoots her in the head. It's crazy. So calculating. So like practical no compassion for marlene as a person he's not like you know i'll keep my eye out for another immune person and send them to you it's just like no 
you're going to risk what I've decided is mine, which is happiness, finally. The weird part about that whole thing and the strange part about that, and I guess the scary part about that is like killing Marlene is technically like just destables the fireflies after you killed their scientists. Like it, regardless of if you even removed Ellie's brain or not, or if they were just like, fuck it, take the kid. Like, dude, you killed a fucking scientist in the middle of the goddamn essential the apocalypse like right. someone that was like close as hell even if you could somehow find another fucking scientist you have to get them up to speed right joel our hero humanity took joel's daughter <laughs> so joel took humanity's daughter and then shot her mom in the face damn yeah also terrible. took jimmy cooper and 14% of America. And 14% of America. <laughs> that is bonkers. It's, dude, yeah. it's crazy. So from the moment that you discover that he pulled the trigger and killed Marlene to the, basically the credits, what was your reaction the first time you played the game? My reaction was like, holy shit. The first time around, I was like, okay, you know, this is bullshit. Like, you know, they shouldn't have tried to kill this kid. Like, it wasn't a great decision. But then I, I sat around and I thought about it for a second. Like, I don't necessarily believe that. Like, Joel didn't, Joel made a choice for Ellie. Right. And I don't know if that's necessarily fair. The second time I played that through and I could understand what Marlene's feelings were, I was completely torn because I, you know, I don't know how I feel about, um, you know, sacrificing one for the betterment of many, especially when there's like, not necessarily proof, but like it was just it was heavy and, and confusing as hell. So I can't really plant my flag on on one side or the other. Right. Well, and I I think what's so masterful about this is when the first time I went through the game, you know, she asks him, you know, were you telling me the truth? Or they have that kind of final electric moment before the credits roll, and I found myself just like I couldn't even breathe. I was so like, what's he going to say? Like, what is he going to tell her? And then he, he lies to her again. And she's sort of like, okay. And, it, and it's like, clearly, <laughs> she's not like, oh, cool. You know, it, it, clearly, I don't know. I, I, I was pretty clear that maybe she still suspected things and that this was maybe the beginning of, of something. But um, yeah, I, I got through that whole scene without ever really going, what I did was wrong, right? Right. Like I, I got along through that still on Joel's side because again, I, I, I think similar to you, I felt this kind of visceral rage that they were about to kill Ellie. Now, what, what's so crazy about that is they have so successfully put us in Joel's head for that to be our primary reaction. And then the maybe hours following seeing the end of the game, you start going, well, wait, 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 how many people did I kill on the way there? And and Ellie might save every remaining human, and there are not that many humans left. What is so brilliant about all of this and, and about the world building of this game is that the choice is not a simple one. And because you chose one way or because you chose another way, you're not a good or a bad person. You're just, you know, you're subject to the forces that they've built in this series now, this franchise. All right. So we've talked a lot about the moment and kind of how we handled it going through it but i do think it's important with the clarity of having finished the game let's uh we're going to in the next part of this conversation really take a deep look at the choice and how naughty dog in writing this game and building this world made it not such a simple choice well that about wraps it up we hope you enjoyed this episode and if you did, please take a second to rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. It really helps us grow the show. And be sure to connect with us on Instagram and Twitter at lore underscore party. Thanks for listening, and we'll catch you next time.